Hello everyone, this is Mr. Roten once again. Welcome back for some next level PowerPoint tips for making PowerPoint more engaging in the classroom. I had a question after last week's video about this slide in particular and working with audio, video, and pictures all at the same time. So I thought I would explain just a little bit more detail of how I put together this particular slide and show you a couple others using these same techniques. So once again, if I show this, what I end up with here is I have a picture in the foreground, I have a video layer in the background, and then just a music track playing behind, and then ultimately some text that pops up as well. This uses the same technique from last week, the background removal tool, in order to get this clear background up here. And then it uses a, a video that I've layered in the back. So how do you do all that stuff? Well, the first thing is to talk about layers. PowerPoint works in a sense where you have things in the front and things in the back. So if you right click on any object, say this text, you have this bring to front and send to back. If you think of it as a stack of papers sitting on your desk, you only see what's on top. So if I send this all the way to the back, it disappears because everything else is now in the front of it. If I undo that with a simple control Z, it comes back. So you have to start thinking of what will show through and what will not. So my very back layer on this is the video layer because that's the one where I only want to show the cloud. So if I get rid of everything else and I only show that layer, you'll see it's actually a full screen. Um, you just don't see the full screen because everything else is sitting on top of it. So that's all pretty simple stuff. The video layer, let's work with just that guy first. Here's the video layer. Uh, in PowerPoint 2013 and above, when you put in video, for some reason it defaults to pause. And that doesn't make any sense, because if you click the thing, nothing happens. You actually have to actively click the video to get it to animate. Well, we don't want that. So the first thing I always do when I drop a new video in is I click this play button under the animations tab. So now it's going to play automatically. It will, however, default to still playing on click. So if I show it, nothing. I still have to click. Now I don't have to click on the video. I can click anywhere, and it'll go, but I don't want that either. So I'm going to right click on that. And I'm going to change it, uh, change the timing here. And I want to change it to start with previous. Whenever you are doing stacks of animations with video and audio, you have to use with previous. If you use with on click or after previous, it'll end up interrupting your chain. So you have to use with previous. So we're going to set that to with. And uh, one nice thing about the later versions of PowerPoint, it defaults to stop playing after the slide, so it'll keep going the whole way through. If you have PowerPoint before 2010, you need to change this to after, otherwise it'll stop whenever something else happens. So that all looks good. We click OK. Now you'll notice there's also this little image over here and a second animation in my chain. This is the audio file. And audio is very simple to put in, just like you'd put in video with an insert. You just insert audio. And you can either record it if you're doing a narration like I am right now, or you can just use a file that already exists on your computer. You just find it, double click, and it's in. It will default to putting it here in the middle of your screen. Please get it off the middle of the screen. Hide it off somewhere. No one needs to see that icon during the actual presentation. It's, it's just not that important. It doesn't do anything. So you will notice here, again, you get some weird defaults. It defaults to trigger, meaning you have to click on it. That's very easy to get rid of. You just click on it in the animation tab and drag it up. And then, boom, the trigger is gone. It is still, however, set to on click. So we're going to change that. We still want it to start with previous. And now when we click go, we can see the video, we can hear the sound, and we're good to go. So now you just go in and you can put in whatever uh, picture layers you want to put on top of that or text layers, whatever. So we'll throw in a picture. We'll go to insert picture. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, here, we'll use this uh, beaver money slide from my Lewis and Clark presentation. And now he's not animated in any way, so he'll just sit there and we can insert some text wherever we want to put it. This is some text also not animated and there we go and this makes a pretty cool title slide effect in fact I just did this yesterday I was rebuilding my PowerPoint for 
Charlemagne and use this effect. So let's take a quick look at that one. So here's the slide in the Charlemagne PowerPoint that I put together. Again, it has a video background and it has some text in the front and some pictures as well. Uh, and I'll show you how that happened. You'll notice the animation chain over here is very simple. It just has the video playing again with previous and then it has uh, an animation of the text box coming through. So let's see what that looks like when it actually plays. There's no sound on this one. I did that on purpose. I just wanted the video layer in the background. This gives students something to kind of add to. It almost gives it like a visual novel, sort of an animated storybook kind of a look. And then uh, obviously during class, I'd be able to speak over it, tell them whatever I need to tell them. But it's a real clean, real simple sort of looking effect. Um, but it's using a lot of layers. So if I back out, even though the animation is very simple, if I do a control A to uh, select all the objects on the screen, everywhere you see these little white boxes pop up is an object. So there's a lot of objects here. You've got the, the video layer in the background, you've got the text layer, and then a whole bunch going on down here at the bottom between the text, the uh, illuminated D, and all these different things. That is the background that I'm using for this PowerPoint. So if you look at the other slides in this show as well, it maintains that same sort of look. It just gives it that continuity. Now, if I play around with layers and stuff like that, I have, for example, this picture of Charlemagne. He's all the way in the front because you want him to stick on top. But if I send him backwards, he's gone. He disappears. Even though he still exists, he's still part of the slide because he's behind everything else. You just don't see him. So what that lets you do is it lets you do things like this knight here at the bottom. If I wanted to put this text box right here, his head shows above that little box. Um, on the other hand, this is behind this layer as well. So you can see that the text box is behind this little animated bubble here, this little design thing. And that looks just fine too, except that I'm covering up my text. But notice when it animates in, it's still going to animate behind that object. So there's some simple ways to play around with pictures and layers. Um, go mess around with it. It's a really cool way to do things, to play around with stuff and uh, just give it a new look.